Jones. Let's hear the speakers on number 90. Mr. Fred Lewis, not here. Mr. Levinsky. Bobby Levinsky, uh, Fred Lewis had to leave because he's taking his daughter to her new school. So he asked me to read his comments for him. Since he's the man that started this whole thing, I only thought that was fair. Um, so again, these are not my words. Um, so please don't hold them against me. Uh, so this is not a courtroom and you are not judges. You are not trained to be judges and are not impartial on code next. The council is a legislative body, not a judicial body. You should honor the voters' wishes and adopt the petition initiative today as an ordinance and let the voters vote up or down on code next. One part of section 211 Texas local government code is clear. The council on its own has the authority to allow the public to vote on code next. Section 211.015D states clearly, a governing body of a municipality may adopt a zoning ordinance and condition its effect upon the ordinance receiving the approval of the electors at an election. The city charter, Article 4, Section 4, also specifically authorizes you to adopt the code next peti petition, which is what you are considering today. Honor the people's wishes and our democracy save us all costly litigation. Briefly to the legal merits, if you should seek to address them, there has been a lot of misinformation in this narrow, esoteric area of law. I, meaning Fred, am one of the few lawyers in Texas who has been involved in such cases. The only legal issue on whether the certified code next petition goes on the ballot is whether the code next petition initiative subject matter has with unmistakable clarity been removed completely from the initiative and process referendum process. This is a very high hurdle because courts do not want city councils to interfere with the sovereign people's right to legislate by initiative. There is no argument that the vast majority of the code next petition has not been within the field of the initial initiative process. The petition calls for a waiting period. This is expressly allowed by law and upheld by the courts. It is not a substantive zoning regulation. The vast majority of code next, which is a land development code, is not a zoning code doesn't involve zoning, but affordable housing, water quality, flooding, infrastructure, transportation, construction standards, permitting processes, et cetera. No one argues these subjects are not within the, uh, the subject of the, are not the subject of the initiative. Only one section, one-tenth, involves zoning laws, chapter four of 13 chapters. The petition calls for a vote on code next in its entirety, including zoning. The statute expressly allows voters to vote in their entirety to repeal the city's zoning laws. The petition then says if voters vote to repeal the code next, that the voters then readopt the existing code. This is a reasonable reading of the petition, whether people can make other right reasonable arguments. Therefore, council must place the code next petition initiative on the ballot because the petition subject matter has not been completely removed from the initiative process. He goes on, but I'm sure you guys have letters from him, um, and I will do my best to scan this and send it to you and put it in the public record. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Abair. Megan Eisenbach, Eisenbach, Debbie Russell. Hello. Debbie Russell, District 3, uh, speaking on behalf of Indy Austin on this matter. Um, we have been there and done that with council many times in the past 18, 20 years, in my experience, where we've brought signatures been validated and council fights us putting it on the ballot the law is clear you've heard uh fred Luce's words up in the earlier speaker said eight hours ago comment because he's special and got to speak then um <clears throat> but the law is clear for what you're supposed to do tonight we have the signatures you have to put on the ballot um we we've done this i guess like i said before and it's <laughs> With, that, with our at-large council, like I said, it feels very at-large, this, this, this act here of trying to keep it off the ballot. And I think that if you put it on the ballot and then wait, and then if it passes, then you can, we can have the legal arguments in court about the, the language or whether or not we, uh, the, the petition is... Uh, not something that the voters, you, you, you don't have to put it into effect. In other words, you can have that fight later, 
but it's clear to me that you're having this fight now and spending this money now with lawyers because you want to keep it from getting on the ballot in the first place because you don't want uh, the result that uh, it may happen uh, that the citizens don't like what's coming out in code next. So I urge you to do what the law says for you to do tonight and then we can visit all of the legal stuff later and spend the money if we have to, if it passes. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Bunch. You have three minutes. Good morning, Mayor, Council Members. Thank you for your efforts this morning. Um, this is also one about people and power and memory and forgetting. I just want to say Pat Crow would remember and she would approve of these comments. Um, she was there as uh, a leader in the Save Our Springs campaign. Um, and like this matter, that was an initiative, uh, very instructive for us today. I was one of the young lawyers at the time working on it. We were blessed to have Dave Richards and Phil Durst and Michael Curry helping us. And when I say us, that was a Save Our Springs, Springs Steering Committee of which Councilmember Kitchen and I were uh, plaintiffs uh, in suing the rural council to force them to put the initiative on the ballot. The courts are very clear. Once your city clerk certifies the petition is valid, um, you, have, you have three choices. But you have no discretion to not choose one of those three. You can adopt the ordinance as is. That's what you're posted to possibly do tonight. You can put it on the ballot within a reasonable, a, a fixed period of time. Or you can put it on the ballot with an alternative that you think would be better. But you have no choice not to do those three, one of those three. The courts are also crystal clear, uh, and they've said it over and over, that unless and until the voters approve the initiative at the ballot box, whether it's legal or not is a hypothetical question, speculative a, or a contingent situation. Courts are not empowered to, to decide hypothetical questions. So if y'all try to refuse to put it on the ballot, you don't choose to adopt it tonight, um, you will be sued and the courts will force you to put it on the ballot. And they'll do that just simply because you have to. And they won't look at judging the merits of it. Now you should adopt it tonight because it does only three things. It, it requires a waiting period. It requires voter approval before it takes effect. And it has a severability clause if something there is not uh, legal. There's nothing substantive whatsoever in that uh, ordinance. It's purely procedural and giving the voters a right to check your work. And we love nothing more than to tell voters to approve what you approve. Thank you. So please do your job. Um, and choose one of those three, preferably choosing to adopt it tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Council, gets us back up to the uh, dais. 